Welcome everybody to this uh, course on dynamics and control. My name is Pedro Albertos from the Politecnica University of Valencia in Spain and the subject of today is uh, module 4, control systems design. In particular we are going to deal with the control system uh, parameters. In the previous uh, video we uh, saw the control systems uh, structure and today we are going to deal with the tuning of the parameters of these control systems. So we saw that there are many structures to design the control. Mainly there are two kinds of structures. What is called an open loop control, where the control is generated in the control subsystem and applied to the system without uh, getting feedback from uh, it or the closed loop control where the sensors are providing the information for the control. But in any case this control subsystem has uh, itself some structure and some parameters and this is what we are going to discuss today. <coughs> so in the case of the open loop control we have the process, we have the control generating the control action and maybe there are some disturbances and in some cases we can measure these uh, disturbances uh, but the control is fully based on the knowledge we have about the process and the disturbances. <coughs> so uh, we can derive the output of the process depending on the control action and also depending on the disturbance P. So, <coughs> The ideal control, as you can de derive from this uh, expression, is that uh, U, the control action, will be the inverse of uh, J times the reference minus the uh, effect of the disturbance. So, uh, in the case that the disturbance is in the input, then uh, we can apply a control action which is opposite to the disturbance. Well, uh, <coughs> That uh, means that we need a perfect knowledge of the process, of the, its model. Because if we want to apply the ideal control, the control is generated based on G, which is the model of the process, and GD, which is the model of the disturbances. So, uh, let's see for instance if the objective is uh, reference tracking. Then we need uh, to apply a control, which is the reference multiplied by the the operator of the controller and in that case the operator should be the inverse of the plant model. That means that uh, we may have uh, problems of uh, feasibility and stability because probably the inverse of uh, G is not stable or even is not physically uh, realizable. <coughs> in the case of disturbance rejection the control should be uh, as we saw, uh, saw before inverse of the, the opposite of the, the disturbance or multiplied by the transfer function of the mm, disturbance and in that case uh, GRD, the regulator or the controller should be the inverse of the plant model again multiplied by the uh, <coughs> transfer uh, model of the disturbance and again we have uh, the problem of the feasibility and stability because uh, this controller can be uh, difficult to implement or even not uh, stable. <coughs> so what are the characteristics of the um, open loop control? They require a full knowledge of the process. No uh, disturbances are considered or if they are considered they should be measured and we should know the model of these disturbances. In that case there are no stability problems once the controller is designed because the, the two subsystems, the control and the process, they are in, the <coughs> in series so the stability of the whole system depends on the stability of the components. But uh, there, is, uh, there are good news, uh, zero uh, error is achievable because uh, if we have a perfect knowledge of the model we can um, achieve that the output is precisely uh, the reference. In the case of the closed loop we have uh, 
um, a sensor providing information about the controller variable and the control is generated based on the error. So the control is based on the difference between the reference or set point and the measurement. <coughs> and the error is uh, fundamental. So we may have very simple closed loop control, what is called the on-off uh, control. In that case, <coughs> the um, control action is a function of the error, but this function is simply uh, two values, uh, v or minus v. Uh, or we may have a did on, some uh, small errors which are not active, or we may have also the problem of uh, hysteresis when the control uh, the output uh, depends on the um, way the error is uh, uh, changing. But <coughs> it is very simple. It's the case, for instance, of the control of the temperature in in this room. We have. Uh, thermostat, uh, which is um, sensing the temperature of the room, and if the temperature is below some uh, uh, threshold, the um, heating is connected. If the temperature is above this uh, threshold, the uh, heating is disconnected. So it's very simple, it's on-off uh, control, but of course it's not very precise. What is more interesting is uh, to have a, a control action which is uh, a function of the current value of the error, which uh, also takes into account the past values of the error, in that case is the integral or, or the accumulated errors, and also the future values of the uh, error, the derivative or the increment. And altogether we have uh, what is called the PID controller. PID controller are um, almost 90-something percent of the controllers in the industry because they uh, capture these uh, three ideas of uh, generating a control which is proportional to the error, proportional to the past values, the integral, and proportional to the next or the future values of the error, which are the derivative. <coughs> in the case, for instance, uh, that we want to control the position of this uh, axis, uh, then we have, uh, or we want to control the velocity, we have a control action which is uh, mm, proportional to the error between the reference and the measurement, uh, proportional to the derivative and proportional to the integral. And let's see what is uh, the effect of these three actions. Uh, assume that there is only uh, the proportional action. In that case, the action to the system is proportional to the error, to the difference. And we get this kind of uh, figures. On the left uh, figure you see the response of the system and on the uh, right figure you see the error. And if we increment the uh, control uh, the action, the proportional uh, coefficient Kp, then we get uh, something like that. And you can see that the response is faster, but we get some oscillations. And also uh, the steady state error has been reduced. If you compare this with that, you can see that uh, the response in that case is uh, faster, but oscillating, but the error, the steady state error is uh, lower. And in that case, the uh, response is slower, no oscillating that much, uh, but we are not reaching the final point. The steady state error is larger. Then in order to reduce the error in steady state, uh, we can introduce the integral action. The integral action means that the control is proportional to the error and also the uh, accumulated error. So you can see here in this figure uh, this is the response of the proportional action and then if, if we introduce the integral action then we are achieving this and then we are uh, reducing the steady state error. But <coughs> we have the risk of uh, instability. If we increment the integral action too much then we can get something like this, uh, again oscillating, of course reducing the uh, steady state error but uh, if we increase more and more, the system may become uh, unstable. 
So the increment of uh, k sub i, the integral action, may produce larger oscillations, but uh, the good news is that it, is, it cancels the steady state error. <coughs> In the case of the derivative uh, action, the control is proportional to the increment uh, of the error, how the error is changing with time, uh, <coughs> the derivative. And then in that case, we see that the response here is much uh, uh, faster, much oscillator, uh, oscillating. Uh, the uh, steady state error is, is not uh, removed. And also we see that the uh, error and the control action is very strong at the very beginning. So the <coughs> as we are derivating the error, the noise can be amplified. Uh, in, even the system is becoming faster. So, <coughs> uh, what are the main characteristics of the closed loop control? As you can see here, and you remember from one of our previous uh, sessions, uh, if uh, k is very large, the, the, steady st the static gain of uh, the controller, which is the kp, then uh, we realized that this was reduced to uh, cancel the disturbance and also to uh, not taking into account the transfer function of the process. But that means that with closed loop control, we don't need a good model of the process. Disturbances can be rejected, but we may have a stability problems because we are closing the loop and then the stability of the whole system depends not only on the process and the control, but also in the way the feedback is generated. Another big problem is that zero uh, error is not achievable because by conception the control is generated based on the error. So should be some error to react. And also some extra instruments are required. So in general closed loop control is more expensive than uh, open loop uh, control. So, what have we seen uh, today? We have seen the parameters of the control systems in basic control structures. Uh, these are the open loop and closed loop uh, control. And we have seen in the case of the open loop that we can uh, design the control just by cancellation, putting the inverse of the plant process with the problems that we have seen uh, it may happen. And uh, we have seen the on-off control, which is uh, very simple and very easy to implement, but uh, also uh, achieving not very good performance. And if we want to be more precise in the control, then we uh, have seen the PID controllers, where the control action is proportional to the error, to the integral of the error, uh, and to the differential uh, derivative of the error. So what is next? Today we have concentrated in simple control systems. Next uh, time we are going to see more uh, complex systems, uh, more complex control systems and how we can design this. Well, uh, that's all for today. Thank you.